Hey guys, I'm going to try to make this video quick, but while some things are on my brain, uh, as usual, that I feel like I want to let anybody know, I, I run and try to record it. A lot of time with the hecticness, you know, I don't get here to get my thoughts out that, that I'm, things that maybe I want people to know or whatever. And uh, I was just sitting here talking to my wife, who is now sweeping the floors all through the house and fixing to mop them. Uh, yeah, I've, I'm lucky, guys. I got a wife that really takes care of me. And she's done it whether I've had money in my pocket or whether I haven't, which is even more remarkable in this day and time. And anyway, I'm sitting and I'm talking to her and we're talking about Joe. And, and it came up that how maybe other people uh, perceive Joe or I. And, I. and I told my wife, I said, you know what? I said, people probably look at us and think I slave drive Joe or something. Uh, Maybe a couple of years ago, I, I pushed him a little bit, but uh, nothing could be further from the case. Uh, not with my son. Um, I leave the fray. Uh, I command the ship. Uh, but we're at a point right now me and my son, Joe, that when we're in the gym, uh, I'm, and I'm going to relate it to the, just specifically the boxing, but I want to let you know in life in general is mimicking what I'm going to tell you here in the boxing, in the training that he does. It's the same thing in his academics, everything. Um, and we got a dog outside barking. Well, it's not our dog. We got a big German Shepherd. There's a little dog out there. I apologize for that. Um, but uh, typical in my captainship of leading the ship and sailing the ship and being the captain and his family, uh, and and obviously with Joe. Uh, it's at a point now I have to call him down. I have to, <clears throat> I have to tell him, son, this is enough. This is enough. You know, let's get out of here. Let's go home. Uh, calm this down. Don't do, you've done enough of this or this other thing. As captain of this ship, though, with me and Joe, uh, I delegate, I can't express to you how much I delegate to him. Uh, I really delegate to the guys. I just, I look, and if I see goofing, if I see something, I'm on it. And I, I'm a yellow boy. I ain't pleasant to be around me and me training you. It's just it's not, it's not the, the most pleasant thing in the world. Uh, I push young men, and I enjoy here at the latter part of my life being able to develop young boys into strong men where I can. And, uh, but I just wanted everybody to know with Joe, uh, he has well exceeded any expectations I've had in him academically, athletically, in general, and certainly in boxing. Typical day for us is I have things scheduled out. And 
Uh, we go in the gym. Uh, well, this is going to be weight day. This is strength and conditioning day. This is uh, body weight calisthenic and uh, defense day. This is this. This is that. Uh, we got a lot of things we do. And we switch things up. We, we keep things a little interesting. So every Monday's not doing the same thing. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday's not doing the same thing. Joe typically works six days a week uh, in the boxing, five days a week in the academics, which turns into seven days a week a lot of the time. <laughs> Uh, with studying and homework and whatnot, reading and all the things involved. And, uh, uh, but we typically will go in. He, he, uh, now I preach on things like uh, when you see us doing dumbbell works or certain different circuits we do with any weights, uh, the weights we use other than <clears throat> some squatting. Uh, everything uh, is done with dumbbells uh, when there's any weightlifting involved. I do believe in in some weightlifting. Uh, I, I I'm not one of those people that believe you that boxers should not do any weight lifting. Uh, there's different camps out there. There's camp. There's there's folks that uh, believe you only lift your body weight. I mean, there's a, and there's a lot of variances in between there. But with me, it's build the body first and then be working on the rest while you're building the body and or maintaining the body strength and endurance and things of that nature. So uh, as an example, I told Joe we will... Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. He's like, Dad, I just took three days off for Christmas. I don't want to do that. And we compromised on he's going to do a lot more road work. And if he does anything, he'll do push-ups around the house or set-ups, things of that nature. Uh, but uh, he pushes himself. He, he is more than exceeded at 15 years old expectations that, from me uh, I, you know I don't know on the other side of this this video that you're watching what you guys see I can't I can't judge that but I know what I see daily in person and uh, it, it exceeds everything uh, and I'm not some big uh, uh, multinational professional boxing training. I, I'm not. I come from a family of a couple of uh, major league professional baseball players, uh, very athletic men, uh, and some very athletic women that have played uh, uh, collegiate and professional soccer. Uh, so we're not playing games and handing out lollipops around here when it comes to sports. Uh, a lot of you know my dad died when I was a little boy, and my mother was right there with me in every game I ever played, every event I ever competed in, and she was hollering the, the, the loudest, trust me. Uh, and when your brother is a very successful Major League Baseball player, uh, It'll rub off on her, and her brother was, and it rubbed off on her. So, uh, we've, we've, it's a little different with us, but, uh, and just a little bit about me. I uh, boxed in the Charlotte area, uh, in the Greensboro area, in North Carolina, Um I've been fighting all my life. I just quit fighting. Maybe last fight I got in, I think, was four and a half years ago, and I stroked, and <laughs> I don't think I can do it no more. Uh, so I, I was a okay amateur, and I, 
I was a lightweight. Uh, I was never a big boy like my son. I'm a lot bigger now, and but uh, and I wasn't I wasn't big uh, even on through being a young adult. But uh, Joe's a big boy, and uh, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but. Uh, he's 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 imposing. He's very very imposing. Uh, I worked around uh, Ace Miller a little bit. Um, great great trainer. Great great man. He handled, managed, and trained Big John Tate, former WBA heavyweight champion. Uh, I was not with Ace Miller uh, when he had John Tate and John Tate won the championship or nor when he lost it. But I was around uh, subordinates of his and that's who worked with me the best. Uh, they're the ones that really taught me what I try to teach today. And these guys and people that were older than Ace Miller at the time, God bless his soul, uh, uh, he's passed on, but uh, he was a younger fella at the time, and he had a lot of older men that had more experience than him. And those guys always, I don't, I don't know why, but the old men would take a shining to me. And uh, they'd talk to me more than they would a lot of these other kids. And uh, I learned a lot from them, and I enjoyed them. And uh, uh, I think some of that's what's molded me today as an older man working around younger boys trying to develop them into men is what these older men instilled in me. And... Uh, uh, so I got to be around a lot of people. I got to, uh, goodness gracious, there's another guy. Uh, I don't believe he even turned professional, but uh, he fought uh, Teofilo Stevenson in Charlotte, and I was with all them guys. I'm sorry, I can't remember his name right now. Shame on me for that because I, I, I knew this guy, and I looked up to him. I repeatedly spent some time with him, and I can't think of his name. Uh, he was going to represent the United States in the 1980 Olympics. Um, I uh, had a long-term uh, relationship, uh, friend, you know, friends relationship, and a guy who really took a helped me a lot uh, in many many different ways Ernie Shavers uh, so I've been around a lot of people I, I got to meet Teofilo Stevenson and the Cuban team of 1980 uh, I got to be around a lot of exciting stuff uh, as a young kid well I wasn't too young but I was a middle teen Well, a little bit later than a middle teen. But I was still a kid. I was still a baby. And uh, learned a lot from a lot of people. And uh, But there ain't nothing expert about me. Um, I'm old school. And uh, I'm glad I've instilled old school principles into Joe and into the boys that I work with. And it has proven wonders. Uh, right now, not only will the, box, the boxing leagues throughout the country uh, don't permit Joe in because he's too violent, uh, these other kids are getting the same things. I'm spending, you know, three months, four months with a kid. I tell them, look, they'll let you in to compete. They say, now I've been over there with... Uh, this gringo, and they're like, no, I don't know. So they've turned a couple of others away. So we're doing something right. We are doing something right. Uh, but perfection, no. And we always 
uh, enjoy and encourage anything any of you guys, uh, any information you'd like to give us or any hints or suggestions or, or, or whatnot, uh, would be very appreciated, very appreciated. Um, we do things a little bit different uh, than what guys typically are doing today. We're in a more squared stance. Uh, uh, we're not, we're in, we stay in walk them down mode uh, and things like that. I do believe we, in my little camp, uh, need to strive to work better in quicker footwork and better footwork. Uh, but we are not um, trying to move around like Ali. And one other thing that I've been meaning to talk about, and I haven't done it, and if you've hung on through this rambling, you'll get a good piece of information here. Uh, you can't expect young boxer to... Uh, move around Muhammad Ali while you're listening to synthesized computer music and rap on a constant basis in your gym or during your workout sessions if you got earbuds or phones on. Uh, you are going to fluidly move or not so fluidly move as the music you're training to. And that is just something that is completely lost today. It's just lost. Uh, if you want to move like Ali, you need to be listening to music uh, like Ali was listening to. If you want to move like Larry Holmes, you need to be listening to Larry Holmes' music. And so on and so forth. Um, that's why when, when I put these little snippets up of Joe, I put some music to it. I'm doing that for a reason. Uh, the older folk, they like, hey, that's my music. I like that too, you know. And it, it it's for you, and we want you to see it, and we want you to enjoy listening to it while you're watching. But a real reason that I started doing that was to encourage the younger boxers to listen to some better music. Uh, and I've gotten lost out of preaching on that and talking about that. And uh, I've been meaning for two or three weeks, I'm like, I got to talk about the music. And I haven't done it. Well, maybe two or three months and I haven't done it. But you're going to move as fluid as the music is you're listening to while you train. Uh, my suggestion is, is if you just hate fluid music, hate music that has a good beat, uh, that you can get a good count to, uh, a good step, a good rhythm, a good movement of fluidity to, I would suggest just don't listen to music at all. And blasting music, if you're going into a gym and you have to yell at everybody to get anybody to be able to hear you, uh, the music's too loud. And with that constant bang of this synthesized music, it's just no good. And it's showing. Uh, and the music is a huge, huge part of every era of boxing. And you can take that to the bank. Uh, hope I got that point across and hope a lot of you young guys will pick up on it. I mean, music changes from time to time, but all oh, this latest junk past eight years or so is just synthesized foolishness junk. And it's no good for you young guys. It's no good. You go listen to it in your own time, or you know, if you go somewhere, or event or something, great. But it's not good music to uh, be training uh, 
to. It's just not. So I wanted to get that across. Much love to everybody. I hope everybody has a great weekend. I don't know what we're going to put any videos up or not. Uh, I got one more video of Joe on uh, uh, the reflex bag tonight. And maybe I'll put that short video up tomorrow. But we're going to take another few days off. So uh, probably around Tuesday or Wednesday before. Uh, just depending upon what's going on. But uh, what we put up. But blessings to you all. Uh, we love Jesus Christ in this house. The one true Christ. He is our King. And we hope we can encourage you to come get in that camp with us and be our brothers and sisters in Christ. So much love to you uh, and all my imperfectness. I want to let you guys know there's nothing perfect about me. I'm still in my walk and still working hard on so many things. But we love the one true Christ in this house and we we hope you will come to love him if you don't yet also so everybody have a good weekend much love to you all